Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. Uh, first off, I want to actually thank you for your feedback and putting this together. Obviously, we're here today to help answer some of your top questions and concerns around having an employees and how to manage that uh, here in 2021, given COVID and the pandemic. Um, so today I'm actually going to be interviewing uh, an attorney from CDF, one of California's leading labor and employment law firms. Um, they have five offices across California. Um, so Ashley Lopez Tello, she actually specializes in equal employment opportunity litigation and workplace investigation. So Ashley, thank you for joining us today. Appreciate you being here. Thank you for having me, Paolo. I'm excited. Of course. We sent out the survey, we asked a bunch of questions and had people rank what was really most concerning to them. And what was the highest ranked is, um, what are the issues emerging litigation areas in 2021 stemming from the pandemic? Yeah, so, you know, I guess the first thing, the short answer here, Paolo, is that there has been a lot of increasing litigation due to the pandemic um, and California is far and away kind of the leader in this litigation. Um, since March 1st, 2020 um, in the US, you know, there's been 1,250 lawsuits filed that are specifically related to COVID-19. Um, and California is the leader here with 270 lawsuits filed. Um, they kind of beat out every state, you know, New Jersey's at a distant second wow. um, at 130, mm -hmm. but really here in California, we're seeing a ton of new litigation related to COVID-19. Wow, so, so based on what you're seeing, what has been the most common or most impactful to employers? Yeah, so we've been seeing a lot of um, disability discrimination, harassment, and retaliation claims. Um, kind of the most common thing is employees who are scared. They're mm -hmm. fearful of COVID, they're scared to come to work, and employers are dealing with this delicate balance between being sensitive to their employees and also having to run their business and needing people there to do it. Right. Um, and so the fear of COVID is actually right now, it potentially can be a disability that employers need to accommodate. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of always say, you know, when in doubt, let your employees work from home if they can. Um, if they can't, then um, consider putting them on an unpaid leave of absence versus just, you know, terminating them. Right. Um, another big area has been um, wage and hour lawsuits. Um, so a lot of employers are screening their employees. You know, mm -hmm. they're taking their temperatures before mm -hmm. they come into work. And um, that time that they're waiting in line, they have to be paid for that time, Got which it. a lot of employers kind of don't realize right. um, and if they show up and they have a temperature that's too high so you're sending them home they have to be paid show up pay um, so a lot of employers are kind of you know forgetting about that Wow so what are maybe some other areas that employers wouldn't think about that could be potentially hurting them from a lawsuit perspective yeah so I mean I think Obviously the disability, the wage and hour claims, um, I would say another area has kind of been retaliation lawsuits. Um, so you have a lot of employees who are going to HR and they're saying, hey, we don't have the protect the personal protective equipment that we need, you know, masks, gloves, sanitizer, et cetera. Um, and then shortly after that, maybe employers are unfairly disciplining their employees, um, terminating them. And so employees are filing lawsuits for um, retaliation. They're saying, hey, we complained that we didn't have proper masks and stuff that we need. And then all of a sudden, you know, we get retaliated against or we get we get right, fired. Right. Um, so that's kind of another area that, that employers really need to be aware of and, and be careful of, really. All right, so let's move on to the next topic that most employers had questions on. And now that the vaccine is out, people are wondering what are the options and considerations right. around the vaccine? Can they have employees be required to take it? If What if employees don't wanna take it? What, what should employers be thinking about now with the vaccine? Yeah, so interestingly enough, um, on December 16th, 2020, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission kind of issued some updated guidance on the vaccine, um, specifically related to this issue, basically whether employers can mandate their employees to take the vaccine. And kind of the first thing that was mentioned is that, um, you know, the, the vaccine went through, it's 
it's right now it's under an emergency use authorization um, process opposed to okay. kind of the normal approval mm -hmm. process under the FDA. Um, so basically what that means is that when in a, when somebody goes to take the vaccine, the healthcare providers are required to tell them about the risks um, associated with taking the vaccine and then the person can determine whether they want to decline it or you know whether they want to take it. Okay. So right now it's really unclear how an employer would be able to mandate an employee to take a vaccine mm -hmm. when this is only it's an emergency use authorization. Got it's it. under an emergency use authorization right. process right now. Right. All right Ashley thank you so much for all the great information so far. We've got one final topic and that a lot of employers have questions on. And it's just, what are the different policies and procedures that they should be aware of that they might not have considered with COVID right now? Yeah, so the biggest one is the COVID-19 response plan. Um, and in case any of the employers don't know what that is, um, it's bas basically your COVID-19 response plan is your guidebook as to if an employee reports that they've tested positive or they report that they've been exposed, how do you deal with it? Um, what are, what's your game plan? You know, what are the next steps that you need to take? Um, and so on November um, 30th, 2020, Cal OSHA issued some emergency regulations specifically re related to this and kind of steps that employers need to take in the workplace to keep people safe. Um, so employers do need a COVID-19 response plan. Um, you know, if there's a COVID outbreak in, in your, in your company, mm -hmm. you don't want Cal OSHA to come calling and your employees to say, what's a COVID-19 response plan? I've, right. I've never heard of that. I've yeah. never seen one. <laughs> um, that's going to create a lot of liability. You know, mm -hmm. you want your employees to be able to check the box and say, mm -hmm. yes, I've seen it. I've read it. I've mm -hmm. been trained on it. it. Um, and really, you know, you should be designating, employers should be designating um, a COVID-19 response person at any location they have if they're a multi-site um, okay. business. Okay. And um, they're you know, that designated person should be well-versed on the COVID-19 response plan mm -hmm. and should be really implementing, um, you know, as much of it as, as they can. Got it. So, so it sounds like this is something that's required and not optional for employees. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. So that's huge for employers to understand. This is not um, maybe sort of, I'll think about it. You know, mm -hmm. this is something that employers have to have in place um, to avoid liability. Um, and actually, you know, my firm has prepared a COVID-19 response plan template. Um, if you shoot me an email, I'm happy to send that to you free of charge. It might require some minimal modifications just to make it specific to your business, but I'm you know, more than happy to shoot that out or, or answer any questions. Great. Well, Ashley, again, thank you so much for your time today. You've provided just an overall wealth of information that I know a lot of people will appreciate. And um, thank you for everybody who is watching and listening today. We are going to provide Ashley's information um, so you'll have access to that if you do have any questions. Obviously, uh, every, everybody's situation is different, so it's best to um, consult a specialist and uh, somebody who can understand your situation better um, before making any decisions. So uh, again, Ashley, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate the information and uh, thank you. Thank you, Paolo. I was excited to be here. Thanks.